Hi, everyone. I'm Ginny Schuster, and I'm here with Greg today on my Who Do You Know show. And I would love it if you would go on to the channel and go ahead and like, comment, ask any questions. We would love to have lots of interaction on this. Now, Greg, I met Greg through One Business Connections, and I call it 1BC because I like short acronyms. And Greg runs the largest referral organization in Colorado. He knows everybody. So he's a great connection. And today we want to talk about businesses because we really want to get this country back into more small businesses. We want people to reach out, ask questions. And Greg is a pers perfect person to ask. Good day, <laughs> Greg. Welcome. Greg, I'd love for you to get started. How the heck did you get started in 1BC? Um, you want the whole story? <laughs> <laughs> well, you can do the whole story. And then because I'm sure that's going to tell us how you got connected with everybody, right? Well, yeah. And, and what's real interesting is I started the company in uh, Louisville. And I actually was working in Boulder before that, just like a year before doing sales for a humor newspaper. And so, yeah, and I'm really, you know, I, I know a lot about sales because I've been doing it forever. And so I was selling all the ads in the humor newspaper in Boulder and the so that's owner. That's where you get uh, your humor from. Is that it? Nah, I don't know. I think humor is just part of the game, but um, I would, uh, I was writing something called Dang Near Cowboy Poetry because I'm from uh, Gunnison up in the mountains and all my friends were uh, ranchers, a lot of them. And so uh, I, they let me publish my Dang Near Cowboy Poetry in the humor newspaper. And then my job was to go out to business owners and sell them ads and say, all you need is this ad in this humor newspaper to grow your company. And then I told the owner, I said, I'm making all the money. Why don't you at least make me a partner? He wouldn't do it. So I said, well, let me start something else where we give people a lot more options than just uh, putting an ad in a humor newspaper. And so I started One Business Connection, One BC, like you said. And it was uh, started on the foundation of we are an alternative chamber of commerce focused on marketing. So there's a lot, a lot of different ways people can market their business. And it's not just one way. But then somebody said, start these networking meetings. And I started those. And I actually started the first one in Boulder. And people started flocking to them. And so we, uh, we promoted those. And that's, uh, you know, it's a membership organization. And now our members are, are from Cheyenne, Wyoming, down to Colorado Springs. And then we're probably in about 30 different states right now with members and about five different countries. And so we do virtual and live events. But it's all about how to help people market their businesses, but also how to inspire them to do more and create more, have more, be more. And that's really the, uh, the, the culture of 1BC is to be relentlessly positive. How long have you been doing it? Started it in 1997, so a while. Yeah, so you've got lots of experience that you can share. Well, you know, the fun thing is, is I've met thousands, if not tens of thousands of business owners. And so, you know, business is business on many levels. You know, you, you got you to do marketing and uh, have accounting and uh, have a product and a service and, you know, bring it to market and all kinds of different things. So, you know, after meeting all those people, yeah, you get kind of a street knowledge of how to uh, grow businesses. Plus, I'm an advocate and I've read probably thousands of books on uh, ideas, education, learning, on sales, on management, on spirituality, you know, on, uh, you know, social media. I mean, lots of things. So I have a lot of ideas through self-education because I'm a proponent that if you want to, you want to live a vibrant life, you know, get into not formal education, but self-education where you're learning the things that you want to learn. Personal growth, a lot of that oh, yeah, is for sure. so important for people. Now, when uh, you think of a successful business, isn't it, in your opinion, that you have to do your uh, connecting with people? Because 
you have to build up that trust with people. And that's what makes you successful. So that's where networking, in my opinion, comes in. It's all about the people that you know. Well, yeah, you can accomplish anything with the right connections. And um, I am a go-to person, a resource. And so when somebody needs something, like a guy just called me, said, we need a commercial HVAC company in Boulder. I go, okay, got a connection. So it really is helpful when you know a lot of people and you can expand and you can uh, get a lot of opportunities through those connections because they're going to go, hey, wait, I know somebody that would really be interested in what you're doing too. And right. so yeah, networking in, and someone said this in our network, it's not, you know, talking to the people that are in our meetings or that you know, it's tapping into the 200 people standing behind them. True. Very true. Yeah. What's the average amount of people that you would say a person has close knit in their network that they really know? Well, it, the statistics you? are about about 250 to 300. And, okay. uh, and this is not my statistic. I think it's a statistic by Bob Berg. And he's another one of those, you know, geniuses in networking. And he said that this statistic comes from... You want to you want to guess where three two hundred and fifty to three hundred Google <laughs> comes from uh, funerals and weddings. So the oh, average size wow. of a funeral is about that, and the average size of a wedding. So oh. you, you know a lot more people than you think. People really do, and some people <laughs> or, you know, or there are a lot of people who like a good time. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Well, there for the go. weddings anyway. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. So so I think people know a lot of people, but. It, it you know there are all kinds of interesting statistics you know like the average ceo of uh you know fortune 500 companies spend 64 percent of their time networking i mean it's something we should always be doing because we want to expand into new people new ideas new marketplaces new things that are happening because it's it's just uh it's fun and michael gerber i don't know if you uh you know you're uh Listeners have heard of Michael Gerber, but he wrote the real famous book called The uh, E-Myth, which is stands, oh, right. for the, yes. yeah, it stands for the Entrepreneurial Myth. And this really does uh, exemplify the culture of 1BC. He said the people in business, that uh, the people that do the best in business, it's not because of what they know, but it's because of their insatiable desire to know more. And so if, as people are learning and learning and learning and growing, um, they just grow their companies. And part of that learning is through books and audios and, and uh, seminars and a lot of things, masterminds like we do. But a lot of it is from sitting down with people and finding out what they do and what they know, because there's so many experts that you can tap into. And it's just it's just a joy to go find out what people are doing. I know you wrote a book. Is that along the lines of your book? Um, well, I wrote a book uh, called How to Work by Referral. You know, it's, it's really the power of one business connection. How to work by okay. So yeah, that, that's one book. And then I wrote another book called B, B E. And that book is really more on uh, you know, being peaceful with his world, because I'm kind of an advocate of that. Well, you have to be, you know, because there's it's such a roller coaster when you're in business. And that's one thing that let's carry it over into businesses. We've talked a little bit about this different age groups. We would love to see younger people understand what it takes to get into business. What was it you were saying that if a person isn't doing very well in school, then they're probably an entrepreneur. Why? Because they have common sense or what? Well, I mean, you know, and I, I do have a, a little bit of a prejudice towards school systems. And I think it's been going on for years and years and years. And, and maybe I can validate this point by saying, when you went through school, how many great, great teachers did you have? And, you know, that inspired you, that really, really uh, motivated you to do great things. And usually you can count them on one hand, right? Yes. And I don't, think, I don't think school systems have changed much. You know, most of the school systems these days and, and for the last many, many years, 50 years, 100 years, they've been designed to educate children and to, to create conformity you know, sit in these desks, do a certain thing, follow these rules, and they don't uh, stimulate creativity. They really don't. And so um, a lot of children rebel against that. They rebel against that conformity. They rebel against 
oh, I have to do this, or what's the use of really memorizing these facts? What is it really going to help me with? And so they rebel against it because they're, they're too smart and they're too creative and, and they, want to, uh, they want to create a life that they want. And so a lot of times people, uh, a lot of entrepreneurial children or kids that are rebels, you know, they, they just, uh, I think they want a different pathway. And, and so that could be one of the reasons. It wasn't my idea. It was uh, one of our members called Donna Sylvester. She said, if your child isn't doing well in school, they might be an, an entrepreneur. But I think there's a lot of reasons behind it because schools are, you know, I've never met children that come out of school when I pick them up that are just so excited they can't believe they were in school. Most of them are like, <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so glad I'm out of here. I mean, it's really kind of true. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's a good point. I know I wasn't excited about school. I couldn't wait to get out. I couldn't wait to get out of the city, my hometown and go my own way. <laughs> Yeah, it's really true. So, so one of the things that I'd like to uh, kind of like argue on one level is that every single human being is born creative. They are creative because uh, even Brian Tracy, who's a very common sense author, he said that children um, up to about the age of uh, maybe five or eight are in the 90 percent, uh, you know, um, uh, whatever they call that you know, profile or, or whatever of being creative. And then we get to be about 15 or, or, you know, whatever, they're in the lower 10%, right? And, uh, or, or 90% or, or whatever you want to call it. But the reasoning is because the creativity is beaten out of children. And especially through their, their, um, their upbringing or, or their school systems or whatever, because, you know, they are naturally creative people. And I tell people creativity, it's, it's really nothing but a faucet, right? And when you turn that faucet on every day, you, you open up your creative, natural, innate talents. And when you don't do creative things on a daily basis, that faucet uh, rusts over and it's really hard to open it up. But everybody's creative. Everybody can be creative and it's not all about painting pictures and writing uh, books and, you know, doing um, stuff. It's you can be creative in, in the way you grow a garden. You can be creative in business, especially how to grow your business. So it's, it's stimulating that creative mind. And I know you're part of that other program where you're, you're reading books like, you know, the science of getting rich and think and go rich and, and the cabal. And those are all giving people the idea that, you know, it is through the thoughts that you think that you create the reality that you want. It really is. Yeah. But they don't but, teach that in school. They just don't. No, no. But, but when you stop and think about it, they want you to sit there and do what they say. And, they and then if you go home and you have similar treatment, then that is what shuts you down. And they even say for a lot of people, what holds lots of people back, whether it's in business or in their jobs, is a lot of things that happened as a kid. Right. So you well, have to work and, through that. Yeah. And I don't know if you got, if you ever heard of Buckminster Fuller, but he was one of the undisputed geniuses of the 20th century. He invented like the geodesic dome. He was a philosopher, a, phys a physicist. And one of my favorite quotes that he uh, that I give him credit for is everyone is born a genius. The world just has a way of degeniusing us. Ooh. <laughs> it's really it is true. You know, so I really like that. Boy, treat me like a genius, folks. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, inspire the genius in people. Because yeah, they are a genius on some level. They really are. And they can be incredibly exceptional. And the only reason they're not is, like you said, they are they are uh, told by a teacher that, oh, you're no good or you're not creative or you can't yeah. write or whatever. And then people start believing it. Look at the greatest genius of all times. And that was uh, Thomas Edison. And right. I think he only went to third grade. Right. Probably because oh, he escaped the degeniusing. <laughs> wow. And those people back then, like uh, Thomas Jefferson. Wow. I mean, they were so smart. Wasn't he 26 and he could speak so many different languages and how smart he was? Well, they didn't yeah, live yeah. as long as we do now and they accomplished so much more. Why is that? 
Well, you know, I mean, I really think it just has to do with the 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 education of the entrepreneurial mind. Just, yeah. just realize that people can achieve a lot more faster than they ever could think possible through um, through through the uh, the people that have come before us. You know, it's so like uh, Isaac Newton said, you know, the reason I'm so I did so much is because I stood on the shoulders of giants. Just go find those giants, read their books, read yeah. their biographies and let it inspire you to think bigger, create more and do more. Yeah. Sometimes I notice, though, that the window doesn't open until you're ready to get it, have the window open. But yeah. what can we do? You know, there are some people I've come across that when when you believe in somebody, you can kind of tell that they're ready for it. And just that believing in them just makes them take off and be superpower. Well, you know, and I, I think that um, there, there is a, an age factor on some level. Someone once said, you really can't gain wisdom until you're after 40. <laughs> I don't know if that's true. <laughs> but I mean, I think we should be living more for wisdom than information because it, it really is, uh, is important. But there are certain people, like I'm working with a guy right now in his 20s. And he's an, a master. He's a, he's a genius in marketing, and he started reading Think and Grow Rich when he was thirteen. Oh you know, my goodness! Not, not not a lot of people do those sort of things. And no. the problem with a lot of youth, and and you've heard it a million times, is you know they uh, they're very close minded. You know they know it all. Oh, I know it all. I got it all. I'm, I'm not going to listen to my dad. I'm not going to listen to anybody because I know yeah. it all. And so you know who knows when they'll be ready or how to get through to them. Yeah. Sometimes so, it's not the parents, it's, a, it's a, a brilliant other person that can get through to them. So they're, they have to be around the right people in order to start to get open-minded. I, I think your environment shapes your ideology. It shapes yeah. the way you think. Why am I an entrepreneur? I don't know, but I think maybe because my mom, uh, you know, uh, they started their own business. Uh, it was a, a pizza restaurant in Gunnison, Colorado, where I grew up. That restaurant's still going on. My is dad, it really? uh, yeah, it still is. And, and uh, they sold it, you know, of course, many years ago, but my dad uh, had his own business. So, you know, when you're in that environment, it's like it gives you permission to do things. But I think one of the messages that children and people should know is you can really make a lot of money too. <laughs> do you want to work at, a, at, a, at an hourly job or do you want to say, hey, I can achieve a lot? We have this uh, guy that's in his 20s. I think last year he was generating $100,000 every month in his 20s. So, I mean, wow. you can do a lot more. And with that money, it's not because you want to be greedy, but you can use that money to travel. You can use that money to change the world. You can use that money to do a lot of good things. And a guy by the name of Dennis Weaver many years ago said his mother said, money is like manure. If you stack it up, it stinks. If you spread it around, you can grow things. And that's really what money's for, to grow things. Like an energy. Well, money is energy, you know, yeah. in, in a lot of ways. Because if you if you doubt or fear or, or, or uh, have lack mentality, you're crimping that energy. And the money won't flow to you. But once you open it up without fear, without doubt, you know, because there's a lot of fear and doubt, not only in this generation, for, but every generation that's come before us. There just always is. You know, you can go back to any, any century and there's always been suppression and all these things. But opening up that to uh, no fear and abundance mentality, all of a sudden opportunities happen through the infinite intelligence, the divine mind, the God mind, whatever you want to call it, that we don't know how. We just don't know how. I know. I know. So do you recommend people do meditation or is there some program that you see works better for a person to advance their mind and get into that mindset? Well, I, I would say, be careful who you take your advice from. Don't just take your advice from anyone. You know, when I was growing up, there was something called question authority. It doesn't seem like anybody wants to question authority any longer. Question authority. I mean, there is no one more powerful than you. Don't, don't, don't put people on pedestals. You are the most powerful you in this world and use that power, but question who you're getting your advice from. Google them, research them, find them. Have they done anything? Have they created uh, stuff uh, that is really impressive? Then maybe listen to them. But just because somebody says, oh, go read this book, 
Well, no, I'm going to research the author first before I read the book. I just have. Be careful who you take your advice from. And then once you find people that have done great things that are inspiring, then, you know, then dig in, dig into those kinds of uh, people, because they usually are, are humble people that just want to serve and help, you know. When you look at Bob Proctor and right. some of these, uh, Brian Tracy, as you mentioned, some of those people, you can see how powerful they are, especially if you're fortunate enough to go listen to them in person. Right. And there's a lot, a lot of new people coming up right now. Lots are there? Of new people. Oh, well, there's, there's, multi, there's billionaires that are happening every day. I mean, it's just crazy the kinds of people that are coming up that we don't even know about. But find well, out I love about. you talking about that because that gives hope to the fact that um, with the poverty that's going on and, you know, once again, maybe that's mindset. So how do we work with people? What's the best avenue to get people to start to realize that they can do whatever they set their mind to do? What's, where should they start? Well, I mean, I, I think they should start with that book that you read a lot, The Science of Getting Rich. Start with that, because it has nothing to do with anything. There's one thing that we can control in this life. Just one thing, in my opinion. Any idea what that is? The mind. It's the thoughts that you think. Yeah. Right? And, and uh, The Science of Getting Rich, which was uh, you know, written by Wallace Waddles, was like, pretty sure it was like early 1900s, late 1800s. Read that. That's a good starting point. You know, yeah. um, email or text me and I'll send you 250 of the greatest books ever written or, or however many we have on many different levels. But start with the, the conditioning of your mind because the mind creates poverty. Yeah, there's no such thing as poverty. You're creating your own property. You just are. I know people don't want to hear that, but it is true. I mean, you can get out of poverty just by the thoughts that you think. The, the science of getting rich, you know, that's, that's part of a, a lot of what Wallace Waddles talks about. But study some of the great people that, that understand, you know, the, the, uh, the magic of, of thinking big by David yeah. Schwartz. What a great book. And then as you read one book, it'll just fuel you because it's be nice. Mm -hmm. Right. And a lot of people go, well, I don't have time to read books. Well, you, you, of course you do. You have time to do. Well, you have to. Do. They say that is an important criteria for an entrepreneur. You've always got to be learning. Well, the most successful people in the world are voracious readers. They just are. Now, are they careful what they read? I think they are, but they are voracious readers. And someone said, uh, you know, read a page a day. You can read a page a day. Oh, true. Uh, yeah. If you, read a, if you read a page a day, uh, you'll go, wait a minute. That was interesting. I better read two. Maybe I'll read five. Maybe I'll read 10. <laughs> but read every day and and read real, real physical books. Like here's a book right here. I'll show you, you know, this is um, the, uh, the power of positive thinking. Now look Ooh. at how old that book is. This book is, is probably 70 years old, but you know, why do I like the real books? Cause real books have real energy, you know, just like quantum mechanics, everything has energy. Everything is in vibration. So much more fun to touch a real book that's 70 years old I sleep with it sometimes, right? And and rather than, you know, okay, I'm just going to read it on Kindle. Yeah, you can do that. But get real books that have real power and real energy. I love it. So the books are the key. The books are the key. Be careful who, what books you're reading. Yeah. He's one of the most famous uh, authors, Norman Vincent Peale. You want to read this book. You, you really do. I don't uh, think you know, that's in my, my books. So I will make a note and make sure that I read that. Yeah. Yeah, and so, so that's what I would tell people and, and realize that life is an adventure and you get to, you, this is an adventure. Go for the yeah. adventure, create what you want. It's not about, oh, I have to work this and I have to do this and I have to, uh, you know, you, you don't have to do anything. All you have to do right. is create your own reality. Um, you know, and someone once said that um, the best way to, uh, to predict the future is to invent it. Just go invent it, invent what you want. Yeah, as opposed to fearing where you're going to go, you can, when you think of it as what's the worst that can happen, I think that takes a lot of weight off your mind that, okay, well, if I lose this job, well, 
usually another door opens up for me to go get another job or to start my own business. So once again, it depends on the people that you're surrounding yourself with, such as in your groups. I mean, you you know so many people because of the business that you're in. Who are some of the people that make a major impression on you when you meet them? You mean what specifically? Who are yeah. they? Well, you know, there's, uh, there's, you mean their names and what they do? Or? No, no, just, oh. is there a characteristic of someone that you can see that, that uh, their mind is open, that they're going to do well at their business? You know, there are certain types of characteristics in my mind that when you meet someone and they're getting into their own business, you can kind of envision that they're going to be successful. And what are, what's the difference between that mindset versus another mindset? Well, I, I think it goes back to exactly what you said, fear and doubt. You know, most people that are extremely successful, they will not allow in any fear or doubt. And if they do allow it in, they don't allow it in for very long. That's for darn sure. Because fear and doubt will stop you because you're letting it. So the people that are the most successful, they just, they don't have fear and doubt. And if they do have any at all, they work through it very quickly and they get on the other side of it, which is optimism and, and, uh, and uh, you know, positive energy. And every single person that I've ever met that is on the road to achieve a lot, I'm just, I'm going to go back to it. They read books. They read empowering yeah. books and not the books that you're going to think about in school. Because they're just not going to give you these kinds of books. They'll give you books on mathematics. Sure, you need a little mathematics, but they, they're not going to. They're not going to give you these books. We can give you these books. I mean, I know them. I mean, I, there's there yeah. are tons of books that are just uh, they're they're uh, they're classics that people should be starting with. You yeah, know, you can grow rich. You know, you talk about Bob Proctor. He he uh, he's in his late 80s, and he's read Think and Grow Rich every day for 65 years. I heard Tell that. Me, yeah. yeah. So, so those are a couple of things, of course. Yeah. What other advice can we give our audience about businesses? Um, well, um, I wrote a, a story and I write every day and it's controversial, but too bad. I like it. You do not need a why you do not need a purpose. And what you need is a cause. What is a cause? What's the difference between a cause, a purpose, and a why? A cause is something that you'll stake your life on. Something that is so powerful, so meaningful to you, that you'll stake your very existence on it. And when you find something like that, nothing can stop you. Nothing can stop you. And the world will come to your, uh, come to, as, uh, come to your aid in ways you cannot understand because you have a cause. What is your cause? What is your cause in this world? I think every entrepreneur... The only reason they're entrepreneurs is they want to have a positive impact on this world. But change the word to cause. Change it to cause. My cause like is, 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 is something that I will stake my life on. You know, and I, I, a lot of people aren't willing to do that. Uh, you know, I just want to make a little bit of money to pay my car payment. Well, you're going to stay where you're at forever. You know, get a cause. Get something that is just inside your soul. It's your, your DNA programming when you were born that you're supposed to be doing on this world. And yeah, does it take time to figure it out? Yeah, it does, but it's okay. But know it's there inside you, you know? And I'm I not love an advocate that, of Greg. Yeah. You know, uh, it's so easy for me when you say that. I've never heard it before. But when you say cause, I can wrap my mind around cause so much better than I can around the why. And most people tell you, what's your why? Yeah, I and never said that. I, I've had a hard time dealing with why, why, why. And I've looked at it, I'm sure, for three years. But cause, I want to see more small businesses in this country again. There were around 70, I forget what, what the statistics are, but 70% of America back in the 70s were small businesses. And now it's less than 40 are the statistics that I hear. And so well, that's a cause I can wrap my mind around. 
Well, yeah, and, and to me, the greatest um, uh, definition of success is, uh, and happiness is by Earl Nightingale. And he said, uh, success or happiness is the progressive realization of a worthy ideal or goal. And an ideal or a goal, you know, like that, that's a cause. And, and, and it's progressing toward that. It's not achieving it all the time. Or, you know, it's not like when I achieve it, I'm successful. You'll, you're going to be successful because you're in progressive realization of it. So just, just in that pursuit is where you get the value. And it's almost like a Zen aphorism. The, the journey is the reward. It's really the truth. Yeah. Wow. Very powerful, Greg. Love it. And how are we going to get people at a younger age? Can Is there a program that you envision that could be put into place that could get into the schools? Or are the schools so indoctrinated because it's run by the federal government because of the education. Is there a way to approach, say, in our area, Front Range Community College? Or is, is that the avenue to take to get your message out? Um, you know, I, I would say, I don't know. I mean, there are, there are certain, like jur- junior achievement uh, organizations already inside the school and I would say partner with them you know create a team of people that have the same passion that want to help students you know mm-hmm. and give them an opportunity to learn in different ways you know mm-hmm. say say you're flunking out of school or you're not doing well in school well, then have a way where we can approach them and say hey they can get extra credit because we have you know you know 50 businesses in your city that would be willing to hire you or you can be an intern and get credit that way and learn and earn. I mean, there's all kinds of different ways. We just need to get three or four or five, uh, you know, people with the same mission working together to create that plan. Um, and I think most school systems uh, would be open to it because they want their children to succeed. You know, they think that the road to success in a lot of ways is still, you know, go to college, get a good job and, and, and yeah. that can happen, but it's not really the way it works for most people, you know, but most students, most parents, you know, uh, through the, through the parent teacher conferences, through the, uh, you know, through the, uh, the board, you know, school boards, just come up with a plan that said, we want to inspire these children to start working in the local community. And we want to start inspiring these children to uh, think of creative ways they can make more money to, um, to fuel their success. Because America is really a place of success. It just is. Isn't some of that stuff being cut back though? Because I can remember there was woodworking that was in, in class Mm -hmm. for kids. And I thought that there was, a, a uh, schooling, tech, tech school or something like that for high school kids who wanted to learn stuff about, well, cars, but of course you can't work on cars anymore, but things like that, woodworking cars, um, uh, building stuff. I don't think they have that type of class anymore schooling well, you know i don't know that much about that but you know I, I do think that you know i wrote a book and and it said um don't hunt polar bears in arizona and uh <laughs> and so in business you got to go to where your 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 people go so maybe you start marketing it to where children go maybe you market it in ice skating rinks maybe you market it through the business owners that catered to the children um, maybe that's one way to do it. Um, I don't know, but like I said, you know, it's, you know, in order for this to, to, to take root in a big way, we need a, a, a group of people with vision that want to, you know, want to, you know, project this out. Um, that's kind of what I, I do want to do. I, and I don't have all the answers. I don't know how to do it, yeah. but I do know there's a way and I do know that it can be done and it's important to be done. Because a lot of a lot of kids, they're, they're locked into this mentality. I can only make this amount of money. You know, yeah, yeah, definitely. Is there anything else that you would like to share with people to get them thinking along the entrepreneurial mind? 
Yeah, I would I would say um, live for wisdom. And and um, in this book right here, you know, called the uh, the power of positive thinking, there's a chapter uh, because in life, I think this is the biggest conundrum in life for all people. And that is to be ambitious and content, right? And that's really a, 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 an idea by Jim Rohn. And if anybody's ever, you know, want to launch your, your mind, go Google Jim Rohn, H, you know, R-O-H-N, I think it is. And, yeah. and yeah. Uh, in that book, it says, a peaceful mind generates power. So when you have a peaceful mind and you're peaceful with this world and you're peaceful with yourself, that's where you can have the biggest impact on this world. And children especially, they need that because children are, 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 are being torn in many directions. They have a lot of things going on. You know, they're on so much, uh, you know, stuff, social media, all this. But you, you start to get that message to people that just be a content, happy person and you will find your road to success. You just will. So there you go. That's the last thing I want to say. I, my internet kind of flipped on that. Can you repeat that again? Um, Children especially. Go to Starbucks. Go to Starbucks and watch the people there. You know, <laughs> no, that's um, not what I said. I was just. Yeah. Thinking. Well, one, what it makes me think of is the sheeple mentality, because in a way that is what social media has gotten people to look at for approval. And so therefore, as you look for approval, I think you end up being herded into the direction that other people want you to go as opposed to yourself reflecting within yourself and being at peace with yourself. Yeah, well, it, it really is, you know, it's, it's, um, you know, especially the youth, they, they want to be accepted, you know, their friends are the yeah. most important in the world. And, you know, they, they just want to fit in. And the older I get, the, the I don't want to. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't want to be discourteous and rude and mean. That's not the point. I just want to say, hey, look, I, I have my own path. Yeah, I'm going to go on my own path. And I'm going to have fun doing it. And I'm going to be inspired. And no one's going to tell me it's not possible. Because when somebody tells me something's not possible, I, I just don't want to, I just won't hang out with them. And that's the other thing that I, I really think is, is important for children and for all people to know, be very, very careful who you're hanging out with. Yeah. Because if you're hanging out with people that are playing on a very average, mediocre level, you're going to stay average and mediocre. You just will. Yeah. Be careful yeah. who you're willing to call friends. Yeah. And even family. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it doesn't mean you have to uh, exile them, but just be careful how much time you're spending with them. I love it. That's terrific. Yeah. Well, Greg, how do people get in touch with you, Mr. Connector? Oh, I'm on Snapchat and Instagram. And now, I mean, really, the best way to get a hold of me is just through my uh, my text me on my cell phone or okay. uh, email me. And the cell phone's just 303-818-2460. And the email is Greg at onebusiness.com, spelled out G R E G at O N E business.com. I mean, that's the best way to get a hold of me. Yeah. Okay, you can go to LinkedIn if you have to. <laughs> well, that's where I get connected with you. And then I do phone you once in a while. Right. But yeah, cool. and like I said, really, the, the key is just to stay in inspired states of mind. And you can do it. And of course, I'm from Colorado. I, I know the value of spending time in nature. Spend time in nature. Get away from all the, the craziness. Get, get uh, you know, walk, walk the forest, walk the, the, the rivers. I mean, we have so many unbelievable places to hang out. And that's where the, the infinite mind will talk to you. It's where you'll start hearing messages and you'll, you'll hear things and you'll, you'll realize things. And you'll go, hey, wait a minute, I need to act on that. But get away, get, get in the nature. Because, you know, probably today I'm going to go snowshoeing. Are you really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> probably. <laughs> <laughs> there's snow up there in Eldora. Is that where you're oh, yeah, talking yeah. about? There's, there's, there's quite a bit of snow. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. And that's where you, uh, you get into nature, isn't it? You have a place up there. Well, yeah. And, and it's just, you got to get a, I really do believe this, you know, and, and some people go, no, I got to be in the city. Well, okay. Go in the city, but go in 
nature too, because nature yeah. is is where you will you will live at the pace of nature. You will observe. You will learn. Just like uh, Henry David Thoreau, he wrote that book called uh, Walden. You know, and it's all about you know what he observed when he spent a ton of time in nature. You know, so it's important stuff. I love it. You've mentioned tons of books that we need to read. So we'll have to have a link. Do you have a, a way that people can see your list of 250 plus books? Um, well, you know, I would say the only way they're going to get that is if they email. Ah. Just email me. Just email me. I, I'll respond. I mean, I, I'm not. I'm not yeah, you can busy. see Greg. Greg is willing to help. He's not afraid of talking to anybody. Well, you know, some people are, they're too hard to get a hold of. And I'm not hard to get a hold of at all. You yes, know? I know. Yeah. 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 And you always call back. So I really appreciate that. Well, yeah. And I appreciate you doing the interview and thank you. And I'd like to see the, uh, see what it looks like too, you know, when you cool. you got it all done. Super. Well, thank you very much for your time today. And I will get this going. It'll be, it may be a little while because I, as I said, I've got this gal who's working with me to do the 15 second, one minute and full length interview. But, well, and, um, and again, I am in no rush. Good. I mean, I am in no rush. And, and one last piece of advice for everyone. I really think it's true. Take the word busy out of your vocabulary. Take the word busy. Don't use it any longer. You have yeah. the time and the energy to do anything you want. You really do. And you don't have to be overwhelmed and you can get stuff out of your, you know, don't say I, I have too much on my plate and I can't. No, just quit all that stuff. You've got the well, time. Well, that's why you're always giving a busy person stuff to do because they always get it done. Well, on some level, but what I'm trying to say is don't use busy as an excuse for not being able to accomplish your dreams, you know, or, or to be able to talk to people or to be accessible. You know, I'm accessible. I mean, I, I, I'm, I, I could be really busy if I, I wanted to put it in my head, but I don't feel like I'm busy. I'm I like know. That. I know. I love connecting with you. Thank you, Greg. Mm -hmm. Really appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Jenny. We'll see you soon. Sounds good. Thank you so much. We'll talk later. Have fun.